Oh my god, I feel like there's something very important that we need to do. Oh yeah. I pulled out all the stops for the final day of cookie week. Pusheen Christmas sweater. Hello friends, Tara here, but you can call me T Pow. And can you believe it's the final day of cookie week? We've spent seven days together making delicious holiday desserts, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I know you couldn't physically be here to taste everything, but let me assure you, Mike and I did enough tasting for all of us. For the final day of cookie week, I'm making the largest, most decadent cookie I could think of. Red Velvet Cheesecake Cookies. Whether this is the first Cookie Week video that you've stumbled upon or you've been with me all week, I want to ask one last time if you would please consider subscribing. It's a goal of mine for the year to reach a thousand before the end of the year and there's still time and I would really really appreciate it if you would help me with that. But now it's time to make some giant red cookies. They're basically the Clifford of cookies. So to start this recipe, we're starting with half of a boxed red velvet cake mix. If you want to use the whole box, just double everything. You know the drill by now. And to that, we're going to whisk in one tablespoon of flour to make it more of a cookie density than a cake density. And we're going to whisk those together. Then we're adding a quarter cup of vegetable oil, one egg, and half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And what I like to do with this is whisk until it becomes too thick for the whisk, and then I switch to the rubber spatula. So this is the point where you switch to the spatula. <laughs> if you're the type of person that likes to make a big variety of Christmas cookies, like I do clearly, this is a great recipe because using the cake mix allows you to skip a ton of steps, one of which is adding a ton of red food coloring, which honestly takes forever to get a nice red velvet color, and you might even use like a whole bottle of it, like the little bottles. So you'll know your dough is ready when it becomes one solid mass and all of your dry ingredients are fully incorporated. It might seem a little oily, but that's totally normal, and we're going to put this in the fridge for two hours. Now it's time for the cheesecake portion of our red velvet cheesecake cookies. So of course, we're going to need some cream cheese, two ounces to be exact, and we're going to mix that with one cup of powdered sugar and half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. The first time I ever made these, I got to this step and I was mixing the ingredients and they weren't incorporating and I was like, did I put too much or too little of something? And then I realized I had used flour instead of powdered sugar. So I'll never make that mistake again. And then once you have your cream cheese mixture, you're gonna grab a plate and a teaspoon and we're going to measure out one teaspoon at a time and make a little dollop of the filling on your plate. Don't worry about forming these into perfect little balls because it'll be way too sticky for that. So what I do is I just have my measuring spoon and a little rubber spatula and I just kind of do my best to scoop it out and place it on the plate. In baking, cream cheese is actually one of my favorite flavors. It's why I've used that flavor in two of the recipes this week, the gingerbread whoopie pies and this one. But I don't like cream cheese by itself. But I'll eat a cream cheese frosting, filling, anything if it's mixed with sugar, but I cannot do it on its own. Now these puppies are gonna go in the freezer for at least two hours. I have my dough from the fridge and my cheese balls, <laughs> I don't know what else to call them, from the freezer, and now we're going to assemble the cookies. Now, I mentioned in the beginning, these cookies are quite large, and you're about to find out why. Every other cookie I've made this week that I've like measured out dough has been one tablespoon, and this is four times that. Even Peppy is appalled. So after you measure out a quarter cup of your dough, you're just going to flatten it a little bit. Don't flatten it all the way because we don't want our cream cheese to spill out of the bottom in the oven, but just flatten it enough so that you can place one of your cream cheese balls in the middle and then you're gonna use the cookie dough to completely enclose the cream cheese ball within the cookie dough so that you don't see it sticking out anywhere. And then you can carefully roll the dough into a ball and that's gonna go on a parchment paper lined baking sheet. These are going to be so massive, I recommend only doing three at a time. Once you have three of them prepared, they're gonna go in the oven at 350 degrees for 11 to 13 minutes, but what we're looking for is them to crinkle or crackle or whatever you wanna call it. 
think late 2000s nail polish trends. <laughs> While the cookies are in the oven, I'm going to prepare the white chocolate drizzle. This part is optional, but it makes them look really pretty and just adds a little bit of extra sweetness to them. Now, most people say the best way to melt chocolate is with a double boiler, and I don't actually own one of those, so whenever I want to melt chocolate, I take a small saucepan and I fill it about a quarter of the way with water, and then I just take a heat-safe glass bowl and I set it on top, and then when the water boils, it will create steam, making the bottom of the bowl hot enough to actually melt the chocolate, but usually not hot enough to burn it as long as you're stirring it occasionally. And for something like this, where you have like multiple batches of cookies, it usually can keep the chocolate warm enough so that it doesn't get hard again, but it also doesn't burn. But just as a disclaimer, if you are gonna try this, you wanna make sure that your bowl is not touching the water and make sure that it is a heat safe full. You don't want to use anything plastic or anything that could melt because you will have a disaster on your hands. And as always, just be careful because it will be boiling water and it will be very hot. But to my bowl, I'm adding three quarters of a cup of white chocolate. I prefer to use the wafers over the chips. I find that they melt a lot more evenly and sometimes a lot more quickly. All right, I have my cookies out of the oven. I told you they were gonna be huge. And I'm gonna let them cool on the sheet for five minutes and then I'm gonna transfer them to the cooling rack itself to fully cool. And you can see the steam from my water boiling and my chocolate is almost completely melted, not quite there yet. But if you start this around the time that these go in the oven, by the time these cool, this will be ready to go. So the best way to do the drizzle is to just dip your spoon in the chocolate. Don't actually scoop up the chocolate with the spoon, but just dip the spoon in the chocolate and then just shake it back and forth over the cookie. And that'll give you nice thin drizzle lines. You might get a few splotches here and there, but it just makes it more delicious. And it looks so good. And that concludes the final day of cookie week. Even though there was so much sugar involved, it still feels bittersweet. And I've really been enjoying uploading every single day for a whole week on my channel. So I decided that for the next 12 days, up until Christmas, I'm going to be doing 12 days of Vlogmas. I've never done a real Vlogmas before, so I'm really excited for it. So if you enjoyed Cookie Week, I hope that you'll join me for Vlogmas. It won't give you as much practical information that you can use, like recipes and stuff, but it will be a fun time. And I've been asking you to subscribe all week, so I'm done with that. And right now, I just wanna say thank you to everyone who did subscribe or showed support in any way. Thank you to everyone who followed me on Instagram and liked and shared my cookie pictures. I really appreciate all the support that I felt from you guys this week. And whether I reach my goal this year or not, what I'm gonna take away from this week is all of the kindness and support you guys have shown in the little ways that you can. It means so much to me. And whether I have 700 subscribers or a million subscribers, I will never forget that. And like I said on day one, I plan to make this a tradition on my channel so we can officially start counting down until Cookie Week 2021, whenever that will be. A week in December. That's all I know so far. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time, which is hopefully tomorrow for Vlogmas.